Hello, Paul Harvey fans. I'm Brad Dyson. You know, it goes without saying that being a parent is difficult. I'm reminded of this daily. Being a parent of two or more kids is exponentially more difficult. Parents try to do the best for their children, but kids come with no manual. A child who acts up more often than their siblings will most likely hear multiple times the phrase parents have used probably since the beginning of time, why can't you be more like your brother or sister, whichever it may be. It may not be just because of their actions that one child can become favored above another. One child may get lower grades than his siblings, may not be as popular, as strong, as good looking, or as smart. You get the picture. To tell you about one such child, here's Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. This is the story of two sons, one who was loved and one who was not. It was the elder son who won his parents' adoration. He was tall and blonde and robust, heroically handsome, breathtakingly charming. The younger son, the unfavored one, was a timid little boy with thick glasses and ears that stuck out and a chronically sickly child darkened in his elder brother's all-encompassing shadow, a misfit whose obtrusively second-class treatment caused a family friend to nickname him, despite his gender, Cinderella. It was the boy's father who set the formidable standards that poor little Cinderella could never seem to live up to. Dad was the big man in town, the police chief, the embodiment of the law, and the role model for the community. His own athletic inclination caused him to demand a rivalry between his sons in every imaginable sport, running, wrestling, boxing, anything. And when the younger son would lose the contest, as most often he did, Dad would always rub it in Tell me which one of you is the best, the old man would demand. And humiliated, on the verge of tears, Cinderella would nod in the direction of his Adonic Olympian older brother. There may have been a terrible suspicion behind that blatant and aggressive favoritism, for often after Dad had been out drinking with friends, he would come home and rave at his wife that this younger boy of theirs was not his. Yet whether the repeated accusation was inspired by additional knowledge or innate antipathy, the word bastard rang loudly in the little boy's ears, and once again, quietly as always, his heart would break. By the age of ten, Cinderella's fear of his father was so intense that the latter's raised voice was enough to make the child wet himself. And so, with no hope of ever attaining Dad's approval, the sad, sickly little boy indulged in the only thing left to him, a fantasy. A fantasy that someday, some way, he would be big and he would be strong. He'd be big and strong enough to protect himself from the bullies of his childhood, his brother and his father. The older boy grew up, and he squandered his parents' incessant encouragement. He, with the head start, squandered the unequivocal favor which he received from his father. He became a drunk, a womanizer, continually embattled and indebted, drifting aimlessly from job to job. Time and again he ran afoul of the law. Only once was he arrested for assaulting an old lady. That landed him in prison for a year. And then one night, drunk and driving a girlfriend's car, he crashed and was killed. Home folks recall a notable absence from the funeral, that of the reckless young man's younger brother, and so you've heard a tale of two sons, one loved and one scorned, and yet the poignancy of its conclusion lies less in that the latter survived than in how he survived, by becoming bigger and stronger and self-esteemed thereby. You never even knew the errant son, the favored one named Meinhardt Schwarzenegger, but you know the kid brother now the one with the thick glasses and the big ears, the boy who was once called Cinderella, unknowingly destined for the inaugural ball, the little fellow named Arnold Schwarzenegger. Only now you know the rest of the story. In addition to being called Cinderella, Arnold had other nicknames such as the Austrian Oak during his professional bodybuilding days, Arnie and Schwartzy during his acting career, and who could forget the Governator? That's a good one. 
It's hard to imagine the last action hero, Conan the Barbarian, especially the Terminator, being bullied or afraid of anything. He certainly succeeded beyond his parents' expectations. At the age of 20, he had earned the title of Mr. Universe. He won the title of Mr. Olympia seven times. Seven times! He is considered to be one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. A bodybuilding contest only second to Mr. Olympia was named after him. The Arnold Sports Festival was founded in 1989 and still continues today. In 2004 and 2007, he was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time Magazine. He served as the governor of California from 2003 to 2011. After his term limit as governor was up, he returned to acting. Parents, we have to remind ourselves constantly to be patient with our children. I'm not trying to be preachy, I'm reminding myself of this as well. Our words, no matter how insignificant they may seem to us, can have an effect on our children that can last a lifetime. Luckily for Arnold Schwarzenegger, it turned out all right. After listening to this episode of Mr. Harvey, I suddenly feel the urge to watch Terminator and Terminator 2 again. I'm Brad Dyson. As Paul Harvey would say, good day. But as Arnold Schwarzenegger would say, hasta la vista, baby.